OK, now we've done the general theory, let's put that into practice with some examples. This video, we're going to focus on situations where b squared minus 4ac is positive. That is, there are two distinct real solutions to the auxiliary equation. Example number one, find the general solution of this second order equation. OK, so we can see that this is a second order uh, linear, homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So we're going to apply the auxiliary equation method and we can jump straight from the differential equation to the auxiliary equation. So the powers of y are just going to be replaced with powers of lambda. Sorry, the differentials of y are going to be replaced with powers of lambda. Okay, so we can jump straight from that to the auxiliary equation. And if we solve this equation, we're going to get lambda plus 5 and lambda plus 2. You could, of course, use a quadratic formula or you could use the, uh, the calculator to solve this. And we end up with lambda is either minus 5 or minus 2. OK, so it's two distinct different real solutions. So the general solution then, we can just jump straight to it, is going to be y equals some arbitrary constant times e to one of those times x plus a different arbitrary constant. So we use the letter b times e to the minus 2x. That's it. That's the general solution. Great, let's do that again. Find the general solution to this differential equation. So again, we can jump straight from the differential equation to auxiliary equation. And again, solve it. Yeah, so I want a 5 and a 1. So 1 goes there, 5 goes there. Both need to be negative. There we go, factorised. And that gives us lambda values of 5 over 2 and 1. And once we've spotted that these two lambda values are distinct and real, we can then jump straight to the general solution. And just be careful here. The previous question was y is a function of x, but this one we've got x's and t's. So this is going to be x as a function of t. So x equals ae uh, to the 5 over 2t plus be to the t. And of course, you could leave that as a decimal instead. So AE to the 2.5T is also fine. OK. All right. Particular cases. Let's find the particular solution of this second order differential equation. We want to find the particular solution uh, that satisfies this and passes through the point zero three with a gradient of 2. So to find a particular solution of a differential equation, you need, you need the differential equation and you need some extra information. In this case, because it's a second order equation, we need two pieces of information. So we've got a point that it goes through. That's one piece. And then a gradient at that point. That's a second piece of information. Um, so we can jump straight from the equation to the auxiliary equation. So it's lambda squared plus two lambda equals zero. We don't have a y term. So therefore, this um, doesn't have a constant term in the auxiliary equation. And we can solve that. Lambda is either minus 2 or 0. Here's my two solutions for lambda. Spot that they're distinct and real. So therefore, the general solution, again, y is a function of x. We get y equals ae to the 0x plus be uh, to the minus 2x. And of course, ae to the 0x is just a. So we can write that as a plus be to the minus 2x. OK. So there's our general solution. Now, particular solution. Um, I'm going to need the derivative uh, because I've got the value of the gradient at a point. So let's find dy by dx. y primed is going to be minus 2b e to the minus 2x. a and b are arbitrary constants. So because this doesn't have any x terms in it, that will disappear under differentiation Okay, in this one. Uh, you follow your normal rules of exponential differentiation. OK, so we've got a derivative. We've got the original function. Now we can use our information here. So the curve passes through 0, 3. That means that when x is 0, y equals 3. That must be satisfied by the equation. That tells us that 3 equals a plus b. Okay, when x is 0, that would just be b. And then we also have when x equals 0, y primed equals 2. And that's going to give us 2. And I'm going to plug it into this one this time because y primed is 2 is equal to 
minus 2b. This will typically give us a pair of simultaneous equations, although in this case, this bottom equation doesn't, doesn't contain an a, uh, which we can solve. Um, so looking at this bottom equation, we get b is minus 1, and then plug that into the top, we therefore get a must be 4. Now we've got numerical values for a and b, we can put them back into our general solution up here to give us our particular solution. We end up with y equals 4 minus e to the minus 2x. This is the only curve which satisfies the differential equation and has these two conditions. Um, and then the final part of the question was to sketch the curve um, for non-negative x. OK, so when x is 0, we know it goes through 3 and it's got a positive gradient because that was the condition we had. As x tends to infinity, this term here is going to tend to 0 and the whole thing is going to tend to the number 4. Um, so we get a horizontal asymptote. So a nice quick sketch, didn't need to be too fancy. Should have a horizontal asymptote there. I'm going to label that with number 4. And it doesn't need to be to scale as long as you label the pieces. Gradient of 2 is a positive gradient, but it must be decreasing because it's approaching this horizontal asymptote. So there we go. Uh, label the axes, x and y, and there we go, that's a good enough sketch. Okay. Um, obviously, if you have a GDC, then you can just plug that into there and then copy what it's on the screen as well. Um, but it is good practice just to sketch curves anyway. All right, and a final example. Question three, find the particular solution of this differential equation. So again, we're going to jump from differential equation to the auxiliary equation. Back to y as a function of x this time. Oops, that should be three. Uh, so we're going to end up with two lambda and a lambda. And need a one and a five again. Need to make a three, so I'm going to put a one there and a five there. And a positive one of those and a negative there. Okay, so we get lambda equals minus five over two or positive one. Two distinct real solutions. So we can jump to the general solution, which is y is going to be a e to the minus 5 over 2x plus b e to the x. OK, now we want to find a particular solution which passes through these two points, given the arbitrary constant values exactly. So we need to find a and b exactly, uh, not as a decimal approximation. OK, so going to pass through 0, 1 which means that when x is 0, y is 1, must be on the curve. That gives us the condition that 1 equals a plus b. OK, so plugging x is 0 and y is 1, we get this. Um, we also have two zeros on the curve, which means when x is 0, y is... Sorry, when x is 2, y is 0. So 0, therefore, must equal a e to the minus 5 plus b e squared. We've got a pair of simultaneous equations there, which we need to solve. Now, because of the wording of the question, we need to solve these exactly. So you cannot use the calculator equation solving mode here. We have to do this algebraically. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these equations. I'm going to take the top one. I'm going to multiply it by e squared. That will give these two the same, um, uh, same term. And then I'm going to subtract one from the other to get rid of the b's. Uh, so times the top one by e squared. And then subtracting the bottom one, I'm going to get e squared then is going to be a e squared minus a e to the minus 5. OK, and the b e squared have cancelled. That gives me an equation with a in it. Uh, so I can divide by the coefficient of a there. So that's going to be e squared minus e to the minus 5 under e squared. OK, so I factorise and divide it by the coefficient of a. And then I've got a fraction and a fraction, so I'm just going to times the whole thing top and bottom by e to the 5. So that's going to give me e to the 7 on the top, divided by e to the 7 minus 1. OK, so there's my exact value for the constant a. And now I'm going to go back to these two equations, and I'm going to do something similar, but this time I'm going to get rid of a to find b. So I'm going to times the top equation by e to the minus 5 this time, and then subtract the top from the bottom. So I get e to the minus 5 minus 0 is equal to a e to the minus 5 minus a e to the minus 5, which is 0. And then I get b e to the minus 5 subtract b e squared. 
and this looks similar to the one above. So I get e to the minus 5 divided by e to the minus 5 minus e squared. And again, I've got fractions and fractions. So I'm going to time stop and bottom of that by e to the 5. So I end up with 1 divided by 1 minus e to the 7. OK, so those are my values for a and b. Now that I've got those values, I'm going to put them back into my general solution to give me my particular solution. Okay, don't forget to do that. That is the final mark of the question. You've done all the hard work. Let's just now write the answer. So this implies then that y is a, which is e to the 7 minus 1 under e to the 7, times e to the minus 5 on 2x, plus b, which is this thing, that's 1 minus e to the 7 under 1, uh, times e to the x. And that is the particular solution which satisfies the two boundary conditions. OK, just to clarify a little bit of the differences between these two types of conditions that we've seen. In question two, both of the conditions were given at x equals zero. So we had a, a y value when x is zero and a y prime when x equals zero. Um, in the world of differential equations, we would refer to that as an initial condition, an initial condition. Okay, that's when the independent variable is zero. Um, and any other case, we refer to it as a boundary condition. So this is a boundary condition, not an initial condition. Because although we've got a condition which is initial, i.e. when x is zero, we don't have them both when x is zero. This is one a bit later on when x is two. Um, so because they're not both when x is zero, it's not an initial condition. So it is referred to as a boundary condition. Okay, that's just a, a little bit of um, formality there between the different definitions of initial conditions and boundary conditions. It's not massively important for this course, uh, but it is something to be aware of um, if you're going to study, math, uh, study maths further um, at university level. All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we're now going to have a couple of videos uh, where we look at the other cases as well.